Actually, please welcome Arthur Bastings from Discovery, who is the reason that we're all here this morning. Right, so um, where to begin? This is Digital Matters. Um, Discovery is uh, obviously a storied pay TV brand, well known to everyone. Um, not necessarily associated with digital as such. Um, however, there are a couple of partnerships that you've announced and some deals that you've done recently. Why don't you tell us about Discovery's digital future, I suppose is the, the, the best way to start. I think that um, from our perspective, we, what we look at is a, is, is a broad ecosystem of video consumption. Um, so, if we look at TV, I think the TV platform nowadays occupies the pre-prime, prime and post-prime slots. I think pre-bed has been ceded now to <laughs> tablets and mobile phones. And I think, you know, we see a whole video consumption opportunity through the day, which TV has historically been very poor at addressing. Um, and so we see a very strong expansion, if you will, of, of video consumption through a day. And as Discovery, we would like to not just confine ourselves to the narrow TV slot, you know, sort of between, let's just say, 5 and 10, um, but, you know, essentially occupy more slots. And, and that is the, the digital imperative then. Um, you, you're doing that uh, right now in Asia through partnerships. Um, tell us about the partnerships that you've, you've set up. You've taken a stake in VS Media, um, which I think is appropriate as a, the previous speaker talking about startups. Um, you're getting into the startup space. Um, I mean, maybe taking a step back. So, you know, I think what it requires for us is to look at ourselves not just as a content company, but also as a data company. So the first prerogative, and I think something that we've been very passionately working on this year, actually has been putting into place the infrastructure for big data and big data analytics. Uh, without that, actually nothing is possible. So even if we look at the narrow television space, and I think I've talked about this before, um, the way people find content, for example, nowadays is really mainly through social media. And so if we, if we don't open up that social media funnel and, and sort of change ourselves from a campaign-oriented marketer towards a, a community-based organization, um, you know, I think fundamentally we're missing out on, on, on a real um, a shift in, in the way people find video. Um, so that's, you know, I think, number one. Um, then if we look at the content landscape specifically, um, and it doesn't take a genius to realize that, well, long form obviously is only now <laughs> one part of a much broader ecosystem of, of formats. And um, so in that context, what we're looking at is a short and mid form. It's not something our organization has traditionally done huge amounts of. Having said that, um, in our U.S. domestic business, we have a very thriving um, um, a part of our organization called DDN, Discovery Digital Networks, which is mainly um, focused on the seeker and source-fed brands. Um, and they actually produce quite a lot of short form. Um, but in Asia, you know, I think... Let me just interrupt you for a second. The Discovery Digital Networks, that short form content is not necessarily tethered to linear content that you're running on the channel. It's no, not. no, it's, 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 it's completely standalone, um, you know, commissioned uh, content for millennial audiences in, in the social media environment. Um, uh, and, and I think the origin actually of, of, those, um, of those communities is outside discovery. Um, so um, if, if we look at the Asia landscape and, and short form and social media sort of in, those, in, in that kind of context, I think what is really important is to be current and relevant. And so, um, you know, for us really it's not about taking global content into that space, but really looking at local, um, locally produced and locally commissioned um, opportunities. And so, you know, I, I, I look at the world very pragmatically and I see that we have a shortage. We don't have a lot of short form content today. Even if I commission it now, it really takes a long time to sort of build out that ecosystem of production to, um, to make that work. And so recently we've been looking at um, um, technology companies. Um, um, I think there's very interesting work done or is being done around um, uh, connecting big data with video and, and even automating that actually to, to some degree. Um, um, but, but, you know, I think what we really want to achieve is get up to a volume 
of, of short form, and inevitably now we're looking then at partnerships in that space. And so um, recently we um, we closed a partnership with VS Media. We took an equity stake in, in that business. That's um, an initiative that is focused on China, um, where I see a huge opportunity in short form. The online video market in China is not necessarily long form, has not been long, so has been long form and not short form. Um, and so we see an opportunity in that short form environment um, um, growing. Um, and I think VS Media is a very interesting player there. Um, and uh, we, we really look forward to um, co-producing content with them and learning from them and working with them on the China market. I, I want to get back to the data in a minute. And I also want to go through kind of geographical markets and how you see them yeah. a little bit, little bit further along. Um, yeah. let, let's keep talking about partnerships, though. Um, the VS Media One, obviously, as an MCN, uh, they are about creators. They are about aggregating creators and, and producing exactly the kind of video. So there's, there's, a, there's a logic there. Does the partnership include access to data as well? I mean, one would imagine that that's part of the reason for making the investment in the first place. I think if we look at, at, at the nonlinear video landscape, I think what is very interesting for us to look at is big data, monetization, and content creation. So, you know, all uh, partnerships and acquisitions that we look at in these spaces always include, you know, some or all of those elements. Um, and so for us with VS Media, the initial sort of interest really is around their community um, and their creators. Um, I think Ivy, you know, speaks very eloquently about um, empowering you know, creators in the new world to become their own businesses. And I think, you know, it's a very exciting um, proposition. Um, but um, it's, it's, it's obvious that VS Media also is looking at commercialization and monetization as well as big data. Um, it's not something that we're very actively working on right now, um, but it's something that we certainly expect to work on with them as, as time goes by. There are other partnerships that you're looking at, though. I mean, uh, there's, there's something with VidC, which is not necessarily an investment. Um, tell us a bit about the Vidsi partnership. That one is Discovery Digital Networks tied as well, or is, or is that, have I got that um, wrong? So, again, I think the Vidsi um, initiative and partnership um, really revolves around content, again, um, and it's about accessing a very unique uh, community actually around a space that Discovery has historically been very passionate about, which is first time filmmakers and short filmmakers. Um, it's a space that we've done a lot in, you know, over many, many years. And so really with Vitsi, what we see is, um, is a very like-minded um, set of guys uh, that are very passionate, you know, who are very, very passionate about short film and really want to stimulate that, that creative community. Um, you know, they, they're developing their platform. Um, you know, I think we, we made, uh, essentially we did a content and marketing partnership and that can certainly lead to other things. We're very open-minded about that. Um, and we love the fact that they're um, a great business anchored in Singapore. Um, we have our Southeast Asia business headquartered in Singapore. And so for us, you know, that's also a nice connection to, you know, to, so to help stimulate the startup environment in, in Singapore. I mean, they're, they're, they've been very aggressive about pursuing partnerships all over the place. I mean, they've got all the film schools and all the film festivals. Yeah. I mean, is that something that you see as another kind of gateway through relationship with them? You have access to a much broader pool of Yes, creators? I think we have a lot of those relationships also, actually, over the years. But we see them as very synergistic to, to what we do. Now, you're looking at other things, though. You said you're looking at technology companies. I mean, this is from an investment uh, perspective. This is trying to build a portfolio. Or, or how are you pursuing this? Through partnerships or through acquisitions? It's actually a very good question. I'm meeting with our board at the end of the month to actually explain <laughs> so we'll find out. Yes, <laughs> what okay. the hell we're doing in Asia. Um, so I think that um, historically media organizations like ours, um, I don't want to say we're a dinosaur, we're not a dinosaur, um, but you know, we're a classic organization. You know, we're an industry leader, you know, we see ourselves kind of in that context. And so um, we have historically looked at investments always from a point of view of taking a majority and controlling stake. Quote unquote, we're about growing the PL. Uh, we're an operating business. Um, and so that has historically and continues to be a strong focus for us. So as we're looking at growth in Asia, clearly we need to see that come through. 
um, not as a private equity firm, but as an operating business uh, with a P&L. Now, having said that, you know, I think what's um, what has struck me, sort of having left Discovery for six years and spent my time in the digital and mobile environments, um, what I'm now very passionate about is building um, ecosystems of partnerships. Because if we look at, at the branded experiences that we now want to offer consumers today, uh, whether that's augmented reality, VR, you know, maybe some of the things that we want to talk about, but you know, they're much more complex experiences and require a lot more partners for us to deliver that in a seamless and good way. Um, and so the notion of you know, us controlling almost in a walled garden way everything we do, I think, is increasingly becoming obsolete. And so you know, our organization, like other organizations also, is now looking at building a broader ecosystem of partners, um, some of um, whom or which we own outright. Um, some of which maybe we take an equity stake in to anchor the relationship. Um, um, sometimes it's nice to have an equity stake because, you know, you kind of have skin in the game and, you know, you're both incentivized in the same way. Um, but also I'm very open-minded about partnerships with organizations um, who um, obviously we don't have an equity stake in. So recently we've done very interesting stuff with Twitter, for example, in, in India. Um, you know, they're, no, they're an organization that's also learning in the video space. Um, it's not something that traditionally they have done either. Um, and so I think they're very interesting use cases to develop with the likes of Twitter also. Um, now, I think it's very unlikely for us to take an equity stake in them. Uh, we'd love to, uh, maybe privately. Um, but um, you know, I think that that's not going to happen, I think, for discovery. So I, I think what we're looking at is a much broader ecosystem to build, you know, ultimately, I think, a unique experience for, uh, for a consumer that is more complex. So I, I, I guess um, looking at that, it is you're looking for innovation, whether it's technological innovation, whether it's from the content side, and, and it doesn't really matter if it's a natural fit, if it's something that actually will work for audiences. Is that, is that the, the idea? Yeah, I think um, on, on the content side, um, there's a lot to do. Um, what, what I'm very passionate about, and I think what Discovery has always been very passionate about, is so-called new storytelling. So when I was running a Discovery business um, some time ago, um, we commissioned formats like Bear Grylls. Now at the time that was quite a revolutionary format because it really was a very immersive way of storytelling with a lot more emotion and sort of um, visceral experiences, um, which nowadays maybe look um, more common, but in that time were quite, um, quite, quite interesting and different. And they look now, common because they've been copied because it was a successful format that everyone then jumped on the same bandwagon from. Yes, and so you know we were equally passionate at the time about HD. I think that worked out. We were also very passionate about um, 3D. Maybe that didn't quite work out, um, but you know I think it's important to be um, you know in the front. Sure. And there's a VR booth outside if people yes. want to have a peek at what Discovery is doing in VR. Uh, just pop by that station. That's the plug. <laughs> um, but uh, uh, content is, is, Discovery is unique, well, maybe not unique, but is unusual among the big broadcasters because you guys own all of the content, lock, stock, and barrel. Uh, that puts you in a really interesting position in terms of how you exploit that in the digital world. But I think that there's traditionally been a certain antipathy toward releasing discovery content onto platforms such as, say, Netflix or uh, certainly not in Hulu. You know, other, other, other existing platforms have not been embraced by discovery. Is that, is that something that's changing? Because your story sounds very different to what we've heard from the likes of David Zaslav previously. I think that, um, well, first of all, David is a great friend and uh, we, we often talk about digital. Um, you know, I think he's actually quite passionate about that space. Um, it's true that, you know, we come from a traditional business. And so, um, that's a reality. But I think Discovery also is an organization that likes winning. We, we enjoy being a leader. Um, and we want to stay ahead. Um, and, and so, over the years, and I think under David's tenure, the organization has grown hugely. 
So International has now become actually the largest part of the organization. We've invested very heavily in sports. Uh, we actually have also invested in um, Channel Entertainment, Movies, Lionsgate. We've made you know, a bunch of really different uh, forays and into all sorts of spaces. And so I guess you know, where the organization now is, we, we have a portfolio of assets. Um, and, and all these different assets have different roles. So yes, there are some assets that are more classic, where you know, a defense strategy might be more appropriate. I think the way we're currently looking at Asia is very different. Um, I think Asia we see really as a strong growth business for the company. Um, if we look at the proportion of Asia in our global turnover, it's, it's really a no proportion to um, what Asia represents in, in the global population, for example. And so there's a huge opportunity for us to push forward. Um, but then also I think there's an expectation from our board that uh, Asia becomes a, a beacon for the company in, in all things digital. And so that's the challenge I, I relish. Actually, that's one of the key reasons why I took this role, um, because I think there's, there's a really great um, opportunity for us to, to sort of show that traditional media companies can also be effective and relevant in that new space. It's also, I, 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 like, the, I like that sentiment because I think certainly for the last cycle of innovation, it hasn't been happening here. It feels like it's been driven by North America and Europe, and the Asian story has not really been part of that. We've been kind of following, not leading. Uh, it would be very interesting to see that turn around. Uh, I, I want to talk about markets. We, we're, 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 we've only got a couple of minutes left, um, and in the interests of conserving the clock, um, let's quickly jump into, into where you're looking at, at uh, the biggest growth opportunities in Asia and where you see the discovery story uh, actually with the best opportunity. You've reorganized the, the perspective or the teams that are dealing with Asia um, along, along clusters. Can you quickly talk about the clusters and which are the ones that you think are the most promising? Um, so, yes, I think historically the way we might have approached Asia is to say, well, there is an Asia, and we, we, we took the view that our product suite um, is very similar across different Asian markets. Now, my view is different. I think that a lot has changed in the last 20 years of pay TV um, and video and generally, uh, in general in, in Asia. And, you know, I'm very heartened and excited by local players and what's been happening in local markets. And so I think what, what the net upshot, upshot of that is, if we look at consumer evidence and consumer insights, is that the expectation has really shifted for consumers. And so that has, to a large degree, I think, made obsolete our previous product suite strategy. Um, today what I see is, is five clusters of markets in Asia that, that really um, are quite different. Um, we've got, um, in, in our group, we've got Northeast Asia. Uh, for us, that is Japan and Korea in the main. Um, th those are markets that are very exciting, I think, in the media space, very forward. High penetration of mobile and fixed uh, uh, broadband, um, very strong device manufacturing capabilities in those countries, um, very fast adoption of new technologies, strong gaming heritage, actually some of the world's most prominent gaming companies out of those markets. I find this very interesting and I would like to see Discovery participate, for example, in gaming. I think it's a very interesting space. Um, you know, I think it's very unique to those markets and I would like to see us do something which maybe then we can take to other parts of the world. So if we then sort of look at, at what we now call Greater China, again, I think it's a very exciting market. I think That's China, Taiwan, Hong Kong, Macau. Yes. Um, so actually, I think the most innovative piece of that, I think, is China, um, where we have seen a very strong um, um, movement of video consumption from TV to online in the long form space. And what we see there is now two or three players, let's just say three players that are very well capitalized, that are competing very fiercely in the long form space um, in nonlinear. And um, that is driving a lot of content um, innovation and investment. Um, we want to participate in that, um, both on the long form side, but also in the short form side. Um, and that's the Bear Grylls goes to China. 
Story. Yeah, so last year we invested in a local Bear Grylls format. We're actually repeating that in season two for this year. We're upping the investment quite considerably on, on that. Um, and we, we anticipate sort of in the long form space um, that format's business to, to grow. Um, so we announced earlier in the year a partnership with SMG Group around that, and, and we really are looking to take that forward. Um, Southeast Asia, I see a small, um, a more experimental space. I think um, I see the, the pay TV industry, and I think I've said this before, um, in a bit of disarray. I think growth has has plateaued. There's some real questions around how now, as an industry, we take this forward. At the same time, what we see is a very strong prominence of um, mobile companies sort of pushing into um, 3G and 4G, and we see smartphone penetration really increasing. And I think there's a real question as to you know what that means for the video space. Um, it seems like a natural shift if you feel that the, the pay TV space is plateauing go where you fish where the fish are, right? Go, you know, shift to the, the mobile and, and online it's, space. It might seem that way, but um, let's just say the monetization opportunities are not quite Limited, as clear. Yes, yes. Um, and, and, and so I think there's some questions around that. I think Australia and New Zealand is, I think, more akin to Western markets, um, more mature. Um, uh, I think Foxtel is doing their best to reignite growth in the, in the pay TV space there. I think digital is actually quite vibrant as well. Um, so we do look at that. Um, we also look at the free-to-air space in Australia. Um, I think that's been well publicized historically. We continue to look at that. And then, you know, there's a market that I've spent, um, a, a market cluster that I've spent a lot of time in this year, which is um, India. Um, and then the periphery around India, which, of course, we should not forget, still several hundred million people hanging around it. Um, I think that's, that's a market that I see really as a prime growth opportunity in, in Asia, um, both on the platform side, on the advertising side, and on the content side. I think it's always been an extremely vibrant um, content environment. Um, we have um, been among the first, actually, in that country to help develop the pay TV business. Uh, so we've been there for you know well 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 over 20 years. Um, what I would like to see more is a, is a very strong step up in the uh, in our participation in the local content space. Um, so in concrete terms, what I'm seeing us is maybe growing sixfold our commissioning slate there into next year. Um, uh, so we're looking at maybe adding at least 500 hours, uh, original hours of content, you know, on top of what we're doing right now. Which is not a, not a small number. I mean, that's a, that's a very significant increase. I mean. It's a very massive step up, um, but I'm a strong believer in the team that we have, and, and more importantly, I'm a very strong believer in the creative community um, in, in that market. I think it's, it's, it's historically been very creative and, and strong, and I would like to see um, India doing stuff with discovery that is maybe different and innovative and new um, that maybe we can take to other places in the world. We're getting that flashing red light and the sign says wrap oh, up dear. please. We are, we are three minutes over. We've added to the problem. We haven't helped solve it. But thank you very much for your, your insights, Arthur. It's been a pleasure talking with you. Thank please you join me in much. thanking Arthur Bastings.